Listen, thank you all for being here. Um, we it's a pretty good reflection of the uh, the coordination that's gone on with this effort, just with the uh, numbers of folks here and the uh, uh, various and sundry um, institutions and uh, entities of government that are uh, representative here. And, um, over the weekend, we um, passed a very important milestone. Some 60 individuals were um, cleared, if you will, coming off the monitoring list, uh, many of whom were the first that were exposed uh, to Ebola on our shores. Um, and it's certainly uh, a, a relief, not just to these men and women that are standing here, but uh, to the citizens of this state and of the country uh, as well. Uh, the, the, the stress of not knowing, and certainly for those uh, uh, individuals who were being monitored. Um, this is also a promising development uh, for the community and the state. It's also a reminder of the uh, very extensive monitoring and the quick action, anyone who shows signs of, of Ebola, uh, that still remains our best defense against further infection. And we'll continue to be vigilant. Uh, we're going to pray for the best and prepare for uh, any contingency. The past three weeks have taught us that treating infectious disease like Ebola is not just a theoretical problem, uh, but in reality it can something that rapidly can develop and, and, and reality requires that all uh, of the resources of our healthcare system um, in order for us to respond quickly and efficiently, um, all of those have to be working very closely together. Uh, last Friday, I received preliminary recommendations from the Texas Task Force on Infectious Disease Preparedness and Response, uh, which was created in the days following the first diagnosis of Ebola here in the state. These recommendations are a list of steps that uh, the team believes should be taken to help protect our uh, state in the event of future incidents. Among the most important was the establishment of at least two designated Ebola treatment facilities here in Texas. Facilities that could provide world-class care to those stricken by Ebola or other critical infectious diseases. The goal is for these facilities to rival the most advanced units in the world when it comes to the quality of care and the security and the safety of the personnel uh, in those facilities, as well as the general population. These facilities will feature highly trained medical professionals, as well as state-of-the-art uh, equipment, so that they can help those infected by Ebola to recover while keeping the virus from spreading beyond the patient. One of the facilities, uh, and it is a biocontainment unit, uh, will be at UTMB in Galveston, uh, where they have safely studied some of the most dangerous viruses in the world for a decade uh, in their state-of-the-art laboratory. In fact, UTMB is home to the National Biocontainment uh, Training Center, where researchers from around the world uh, come to learn how to handle the most infectious diseases. And today I'm here to announce the other dedicated Ebola treatment facility will be the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, operating out of the Methodist Richardson Medical Center. This treatment facility was created through a truly unique partnership between Methodist, UT Southwestern, Dallas Parkland Hospital, and I would to take this moment to say um, my great thanks and admiration to the leadership of those three uh, very different, uh, yet complementary uh, institutions for working together to make this happen and make it happen in a relatively short period of time. Under the terms of the agreement, UT Southwestern will provide the doctors as well as the nurses uh, as needed. Methodist will provide the facilities as needed, uh, and Parkland will provide pharmacists, nurses, and lab techs. As a matter of fact, Parkland already, I think, 80 pallets you all have uh, 
uh, made available of lab equipment uh, and, and other supplies for the unit. This unit will be ready to go within the next 24 hours. And moving forward, we'll need just six hours of notice to prepare for a patient in the event of an Ebola diagnosis. This allows us to act very quickly to limit this virus's reach and gives the patients the care they need in an environment where healthcare workers are specifically trained and equipped to deal with this unique uh, requirements of this disease. We're fortunate to have uh, talented, dedicated leaders in North Texas and at UTMB who are willing to step forward during um, this time of need. And uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Brett Joie to come and, and share with you. Um, he's obviously uh, the man I named to head up the Texas Tax Force on uh, Infectious Disease Preparedness and Response. Dr. Joie. Thank you, Governor. It's always great to be back here at UT Southwestern, which is my alma mater. It's great to see uh, the progress this incredible center has, has made. Uh, on October 6th, Governor Perry launched the Texas Task Force on Infectious Disease Preparedness and Response. And since that day, our task force has provided nearly daily scientific and technical support on topics ranging from decontamination to the provision of experimental therapeutics for hospitalized patients. We have also begun developing recommendations that will be the cornerstone for a new comprehensive plan to improve the readiness and resilience of Texas. Only four days ago, we delivered our initial recommendations. The most critical and immediately necessary is the establishment of at least two Ebola, or more appropriately, biocontainment treatment centers, trained and equipped to provide the highest levels of specialized clinical care and healthcare worker protection for Ebola patients, and potentially other patients in the future with similar high consequence infectious diseases. The task force is, of course, extremely pleased that due to the support by the governor, the decisive leadership of Dr. Janik, and the continued service of people on the ground, such as Dr. Lakey and Dr. Chung, two treatment centers are now named, screened, and ready to receive patients. The task force did recommend that the two centers be organized at two of our state's and really our nation's preeminent institutions, that being UTMB Galveston and here at Southwestern in a novel collaborative partnership with both Parkland and Methodist. To support the public health efforts here and related to our fourth recommendation only four days ago, uh, the Department of State Health and uh, Health Services has established a testing site here in Dallas in addition to the site in Austin that will reduce the time needed for finalization of Ebola testing. This is up and running now, and this site will continue to support screening of patients in this region as well as any potential care provided at the UT Southwestern Biocontainment Treatment Facility at Methodist. One final update on the task force activities. As you all know, we will be having a hearing uh, this Thursday in Austin, seeking broad input into educational and training needs from a diverse group of hospitals, organizations, and professional associations. In addition, last night, the task force recommended to DSHS, to Dr. Lakey, a new hospital and emergency department Ebola triage protocol designed to assist caregivers in assessing the risk of a patient having Ebola and then indicating appropriate isolation and notification procedures based on current best practices and our ongoing discussions with the CDC. This protocol is now actively under review at DSHS. Again, thank you, Governor, for the privilege of working with this great team to improve our state's preparedness.